unordinary. With more than 260 episodes out right now, there's a part of the story that needs to be re-looked at to see how the series went and to see where the series might be going. Betrayal, Revenge, Insanity Throughout the three years on the platform, that's right, three years on YouTube, I've used those words in one video. Probably one of my favorite videos that I've created that isn't diagnosing a webtoon character with mental illness. Yep, this is what I've chosen to do with my life. Back in December of 2019, which feels like an eternity ago, I made this video, Beautiful Parallels, back when every video I made had a super artsy title. The video was about a very overlooked part of an ordinary that if we paid just a little more attention to, we could have seen every twist coming a mile away. Like I've said too many times over the past three years, Unordinary takes place in a world with super powered people. These powers are known as abilities. And just about everyone has their own unique ability, except for our main character, John Doe. Known as a crippled, think My Hero Academia or the far superior Sky High. However, unlike those series, our cast of quite literally colorful characters aren't going to school to become heroes, that's actually illegal in this world. They're not going to school to use their powers responsibly or to learn about them. They're constantly using them to bully those who are weaker. Actually, this is the main premise of Unordinary. So now let's spoil everything about this series. Unsurprisingly, like the stories from before, John does have a power, what a twist. An incredibly powerful ability known as aura manipulation. The ability to mirror and amplify other people's abilities. The reason he goes to school pretending to be a crippled is because of his past. John was a late bloomer, meaning he only discovered his ability later in life. Because of this, John was bullied by just about everyone. So when he did gain an ability, one that's far stronger than everyone else's, he wrecked shop. So what happened? Well, a lot has happened, but the Sparks Note version is... <clears throat> John befriends two low tiers, Claire and Adrian. Both have their abilities, but Adrian is the only one who can use his ability during combat. Claire's is clairvoyance, clever pun is clever, but she can't control it. One day she has a vision that John uses an ability. Surprise, surprise, one day he actually does. So they start training with his ability, aura manipulation, being able to detect ability auras and manipulate his own to mirror and eventually amplify other people's abilities, turning him from the prey into the predator. But John kind of goes too far, hurting people way more than necessary, even hurting his friends. Claire, realizing her mistakes and running out of options, decides to big brain it, lying to the second in command at the school, telling him that she only befriended John because she saw that he would rise to the beacon the king of the school and to overthrow him with the help of the jack. The school hierarchy runs on a playing card system, try to keep up. Adrian overhears the lie but not the plan, tries to tell John he doesn't believe it until he actually sees it, and then gets kicked out of the school because of excessive brutality and is forced to attend readjustment classes. Brutal classes where he gets locked in a room, physically abused, and forced to relive his mistakes over and over and over again until he breaks. Whew. Okay, why is that important? Well, after these classes, John attends Wilson under the guise of a cripple afraid to slip back into the monster he was before, which is where he meets and befriends Serafina, the school queen. But they don't exactly get along at first. That is until they're forced to work on a school project together, making presentations on three Shakespeare or Spear Shake in the world of an ordinary plays. The three plays they talk about are Hamlet, Macbeth, and Romeo and Juliet. This scene, I'll be honest, isn't very important. The main importance of this scene is just showing how John and Serafina became friends. But it wasn't until re, 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 re reading Unordinary that I really paid attention to their words. Only this time knowing everything. Betrayal, revenge, insanity were the three themes they focused on in the play of Hamlet. And John explains the plot and pay attention to what's actually being said. This story is about a mystery surrounding the death of a king. Even with his sudden death, the king was able to find a replacement almost immediately. It turns out that the queen had been conspiring with the new king all along, and the entire death was planned. Hence the theme, betrayal. While that's all we get from their presentation, doesn't it sound eerily similar? Maybe like John's backstory? 
John, as the king of New Boston, his old school was taken out, dethroned, and likely replaced by the Jack, the second in command. After Claire, his friend, betrayed his trust, working with the Jack to dethrone John. And while they all get absolutely wrecked, John does get kicked out. Betrayal and revenge. Meanwhile, insanity comes from his readjustment classes. These classes would force John to relive every mistake, every time he's hurt the people who cared about him, every time he went too far, every time he was a monster. If these moments aren't insanity, I don't know what is. But what about the other two stories? Unfortunately, these other two stories aren't given any summary or themes that we should focus on, but the previous story set some precedents. First, death doesn't mean death. What I mean is that death in the story usually just means dethroning or something along those lines. So before we get any further, we need to explain Macbeth. The story of Macbeth is relatively easy to understand. Macbeth hears a prophecy that he will be appointed as Thane, a rank of nobility, and later the King of Scotland. After he receives the rank of Thane, his wife vows to help him achieve the rank of King by any means necessary, which means killing the previous King. There is more to the story involving one of Macbeth's friend's sons eventually becoming the new king after Macbeth, uh, Macbeth's guilt and fear causing him to lash out and lose just about everyone, and at the end he eventually finds himself in a battle he's prophesied to lose and submits himself to his enemy. And that's mainly all you need to know. And thankfully Sparknotes has a separate section for themes of Macbeth. And while there are a lot, the three I wanted to focus on were the corrupting power of unchecked ambition, the difference between a kingship and a tyranny, and guilt. These all sound pretty familiar, don't they? John enters Wilson as a cripple, but after a lot of hardship and struggle, he finally snaps, turning into the Joker. Like I said, these kids really love their playing card motif. After becoming the Joker, Cecile, the old king of Wilson, after being dethroned by Remy, allies herself with John, wanting to have more power and wanting to prove herself to him. Eventually, they work together to tear through the hierarchy and overthrow or kill the King of Wellston, Arlo, eventually becoming the new King of Wellston, the corrupting power of unchecked ambition. John didn't want to become king. He didn't want to rule a school. He didn't really want power. He just wanted to completely destroy the hierarchy and no one could really stop him unchecked ambition. Meanwhile, the difference between a kingship and a tyranny is really, really interesting. Because yes, John is not a good leader, but it was because of John that they realized that the hierarchy is a mess. That anyone could become a tyrant because they value power over anything else. Meanwhile, guilt is just an underlying issue with John. It's something that never really goes away. But Macbeth ends in death. Does John die? Is he dethroned? Well, kind of. During the battle with Serafina, he can't bring himself to fight back, only really fighting himself. The guilt is tearing him apart, and he submits himself to Serafina, and later admitting that he cannot lead directly to the headmaster of Wellston. And our last story. While they order the stories in a specific way, Hamlet, Macbeth, Romeo, and Juliet. Hamlet was more John's backstory, and Macbeth and Romeo and Juliet kind of happened at the same time in An Ordinary. We're all probably aware of the story of Romeo and Juliet, the classic tale of star-crossed lovers, and I probably don't need to explain it, but I will for the sake of extending this video. Romeo and Juliet is about two families, two sides, the Capulets and the Montagues. Two families that hate each other. Romeo Montague and Juliet Capulet accidentally fall in love with each other, hope you can hear the air quotes, over a couple of days. And although they're worlds apart, they still share some time together before they kill themselves for love? This story has some problems, but it is the ultimate story of star-crossed lovers, people who can never be together. So what does this have to do with Unordinary? I'm not confirming or deconfirming any ships y'all have, that's outside of my jurisdiction. Instead, I wanted to look at the relationship between two people from different worlds. Serafina, the strongest member of the school, and John, the weakest. 
These two have always lived in different worlds. Even when Serafina lost her powers, that's when John started to use his. But it's the death that I wanted to look at today. Like we said before, death usually means dethroning, and this is really, really interesting. If you don't know how the star-crossed lovers ended up with such a fate, Juliet was arranged to be married to someone else, arranged to have a different life chosen for her. She decides to fake her death by drinking poison so her family would think she had died, and she could later meet up with Romeo. However, while this was supposed to get to Romeo, he never got the message, and therefore thinks Juliet has died, goes to her grave, drinks poison that actually kills him, and dies. Which is when Juliet awakes, sees that Romeo has died right next to her, tries to kiss him to get some of the poison off of his lips, and when that doesn't work, she stabs himself with his knife. Scene end. But the way death happens is what I wanted to focus on. Juliet dies, but not really. But this causes Romeo to die for real, which then causes Juliet to die for real. You see where I'm getting at? Serafina was already ejected from the hierarchy. She removed herself from it, wanting to be free from the weight and expectations of it all. But she still had the bonuses from being on top. That was until she lost her ability, and therefore her spots on the hierarchy. But the thing with Serafina is that her power loss isn't permanent. She works with the people who took her powers away to get it back, so she really isn't dethroned yet. However, in this newest chapter, guess who did lose their powers? Our good old John Doe. A lot of people are thinking that John will get his powers back eventually, and it's a safe bet. You know, John is our main character, and bad things can't happen to our main character permanently. But what if they do? Unordinary is all about flipping the script. What if John forever loses his ability? Not only John, but Serafina too. Her powers are pretty up in the air. Sometimes they come back, sometimes they don't, and she kind of did betray the organization that was giving her her powers back. Let's not forget that Unordinary gets its name from Unordinary. Let me explain. The book that John's dad writes for John. A world with one person with powers, who uses those powers to help change the world for the better, and then dies at the end. Maybe John doesn't die at the end of Unordinary, but maybe something along those lines. It would be a big risk to take, but I think Unordinary is all about taking the risks, taking the chances. It's never been a story that's easy, that's marketable, but it's always been a story that's just the most interesting thing out there. Anyways, thank you for three years on YouTube. It's been a wild and fun ride and I hope to continue to grow. And don't worry, I didn't do it for my anniversary, but I do have a video planned about everyone's favorite boy later down the line. So like always, thank you for watching, and I hope I'll see you next week. Take care.